Ma. Our ship has plenty of stability. Ah, oh, she's got a great roll angle. She could handle any weather you could throw at her. Except for that hurricane over there. Welcome to this video on extreme stability. Now, one of the things that I've had people tell me is that they're assessing their old 20-year-old boat, trying to decide if it has enough stability. And they tell me that they've taken the boat out on the bay, and it rides fine in the waves, and that it has plenty of stability. It's perfectly fine. Well, that's only half of the equation. So you're assessing your boat's stability based upon uh, its roll period. Now, that's perfectly fine. Uh, roll period, that is you know, how quickly you roll back and forth, is tied to stability. But that only tells you how much stability you have right now. What it doesn't tell you is how much stability you really need. And to do that, you can't be evaluating your boat on the bay. So today we're going to talk about the extreme stability situations. These are the things that really govern how much stability you need. And they're very important because those are the days when stability goes from being just ride comfort to a safety measure that protects you. So the first thing we really have to understand about stability is that it's a lottery, not a promise. Uh, saying I have good stability does not mean that you can handle any weather out there. Uh, saying that you have good stability means that you have met regulatory requirements. Well, what does that actually mean? Well, basically there's uh, two types of regulations that we look at. Number one are general stability requirements. And these are basically cases where your regulatory body, they have looked at several hundred different ships and they found that ships with uh, you know, certain characteristics generally came back well and safe. So that's just general. And all that does is that improves the odds that you will come back safe. But it still requires good seamanship. You, know, you can't just plow through the hurricane. Uh, we would still say it's best to avoid the hurricane or you know, to follow your own good judgment. But there's another category called extreme stability scenarios. And that's what I want to talk about today. Uh, these are very rare events that you're not going to see in daily operations, but they still happen. And most importantly, uh, these are scenarios that when they happen, uh, seamanship will not be the deciding factor in whether or not you come home alive. These are events where you may not be in control of the ship anymore, and you're really depending on that built-in stability to uh, safeguard you. And the reason I want you to keep this in mind is because we're going to show how this extreme stability is far more demanding than your ordinary day-to-day -day operations. So the first scenario that I want to talk to you about is a very common one. And I'm just going to describe this to help visualize what an extreme stability scenario looks like. Uh, this is called the IMO Severe Wind and Roll Criteria. Uh, any ship on an international voyage has to meet this stability criteria. And you can see a graph here that looks very boring. But let's translate this graph into reality. Let, let's paint the scenario that this is meant to protect you against. So it's a bad storm that you're stuck in and you've been plowing through waves as big as your ship all day long. And then the worst happens. You lose main engine power. You lose your auxiliary engines. For some reason the emergency generator doesn't kick in. You've got no directional control. Your rudder is dead. And now suddenly you can't keep heading. And the ship starts to rotate in its heading and now suddenly you're taking beam waves and you're rolling back and forth back and forth larger and larger rolls and then suddenly the big wave hits you on the starboard side it rolls you all the way to the port side and you're just sort of sitting there hanging out getting ready to roll back and just as you start to roll back boom a gust of wind hits you on the port side and rolls you very quickly 
all the way over to starboard. And you're rolling and rolling, and you keep going farther and farther, all the way over to 50 degrees of heel. 50 degrees! Imagine that. Think about what your deck is going to look like at 50 degrees of heel. You're going to be holding on to that console. Your feet are going to slip out from the deck, all of the pencils and the coffee cups that are sitting on the desk, they're going to go tumbling off towards the nearest bulkhead, they'll be flying around, and everybody's just going to be holding on, and the ship's going to sit there, and it's going to hover for a moment at that extreme angle, and then it's going to start coming back up, and it's going to go back to level. That is extreme stability, and that's a case there, a worst case scenario, where your ship stability is really put to its limit, and you really care about that. At this point, the ship is a safety mechanism. Its stability is protecting you. Here's another scenario that I want you to imagine. Uh, this is from the US Coast Guard. It's called the water on deck scenario. And this is intended for uh, larger US fish processing vessels. The way these fish vessels work uh, is they have very high bulwarks on their aft decks. And those bulwarks are meant to uh, protect the crew on the aft deck, to stop them from getting washed overboard by any waves. However, here's where things get edgy. It's a really bad storm again. There aren't even any crew on the aft deck. They're all inside. And there's monster waves. The waves come up and they swamp the aft deck. They completely fill the aft deck all the way two decks high with water. Now. Let's stop and think a little bit about the physics of this. Water on the aft deck means that you now basically have a tank full of water with a huge free surface moment. And we know that free surface moment hurts your stability. And now your ship is suddenly rolling a whole lot slower. You've got that water sloshing around in the aft deck and it, you can feel as your ship rolls to one side and just sort of hovers there at that angle and you're not sure, will it come back? Will it? It seems to hover as more waves keep pouring more water in the aft deck and eventually it comes back up because it's designed to do that. So it's important to understand this is each ship has how much stability is available that's their GM, but then they also have how much stability they need. And these are different numbers for every single ship. This required level changes depending on the ship and depending on the extreme scenarios that it has to tolerate. So it's very important to consider extremes. So those were just two scenarios that involved extreme stability. Take away a couple points from this. Uh, number one is that when you're saying you have great ship stability, eh, don't think about that as a promise. It's not a guarantee. Uh, ship stability only means that the odds are stacked in your favor. And it's also important to remember that if you're considering ship stability, don't think about driving around on a clear sunny day. That won't test your ship stability. Your daily operations, if I were to guess, are only about 20% of your actual stability capacity. You're only using about 20% of how much you need of that required upper limit. And remember, that required upper limit is usually set by these extreme stability situations. Consider that worst day possible, trapped in the hurricane with your engines failing, losing rudder control, and hoping to goodness that your stability is strong enough, that your ship is strong enough to keep fighting those waves. And that is the day that you will care about stability. Because that is the day your ship's hull and its stability went from being just a smooth ride to being a safety mechanism intended to save your life. Thanks for watching. I hope you liked it. Hey, did you know that there is a magic button down below that will let me know that you liked it? Click the like button and then I will make more videos for you.